Hey there, a student recently pointed out to me that while uh, I ask you all to do table joins involving three or more tables, I do not specifically cover that in the videos or the tutorials. So <clears throat> fair is fair, I ought to do something to fix that and so here we are. Uh, so I want to run through in this example a join involving three tables. Basically, you know, spoiler alert, the bottom line is you repeat the process to join two tables, only you do it two times. If you were joining four tables, you would do it three times. Basically, if you're joining n tables, no matter how large n is, you will have n minus one joints to consider. Okay, so quick rundown of the situation. I'm going to use the employees database that served as the example for the SQL tutorials. Okay. So safe sake of argument, we are interested in listing all of the current employees in the finance department. Okay, That is, interestingly, from a design perspective, going to involve three tables. And I'll try not to get too hung up in the ER diagramming implications, although that's the point in the course where we're looking back. Let's look at the tables involved. Okay, So first, if we're looking at the employees in the department table, or if we're looking to find the employee names for the department, let's talk about the department because we will need the department name because we know the department name is finance that we're interested in looking at. So in the department table, lo and behold, here's department na name, we'll need that. All right, now let's look at the employee table. Well, that'd be faster just to type employee. Okay, so <clears throat> employee table has all the information about the employee. First name, last name, gender, hire date, etc. We're clearly going to need this information because we want the employee's first and last names for the department that equals department name finance. Okay. Notice here, though, there's no commonality here. There's no link, which you would expect under a certain set of circumstances. However, we said we want the current employees, which means that there's a time element, which means that we need to involve a third table, and that table is called Dept Emp. And basically that is the relationship table that resulted from the fact that department and employee is a many-to-many -many relationship here because we need to capture that time element. So if we look at Dept Emp, we will find that there is an employee number, points back to the employee table. There is a department number, points back to the department table, and from and to date. Okay, So we have all of the conditions that we need. Let's actually do the join here. So we're going to select first name and whoop, and uh, last name. Right? That's the information we actually want. And we will be getting first name and last name from the employee table we see right here. Uh, so we know one of the tables is going to be employee. We also are going to have a where condition involving department name. So we know we need to involve department as well and we know that we are going to need to join the two using these two foreign keys here in department employee so we will also need to involve that as well we also have a condition an explicit condition in department employee here uh, we need the to date to be null to date to null means that their time of active employment in the given department has not yet ended. So if that's empty, it means they are still there, which is what we are in this example looking for. Although we don't necessarily need that for the three table example. That's useful um, uh, real, world, real world context there. Okay, so we have, and I'm going to move this, bump this up just a smidge if I can, which I'm not sure I'm going to be able to. No, not not terribly easy. You're just going to have to look off the bottom of your screen. Well, I know what I can do. I'll just stretch it up like this. You can see a little of that. Okay, that should be a little bit easier to see. Okay, so there's our three tables. Three tables, two join conditions. Uh, where we so first, uh, so uh, where join conditions first, explicit condition second. So we need to enjoy join employee and the department employee table where employee and there's three there's three or more techniques I'll run through two of them uh, you can extrapolate from there first the easiest but the least efficient the kind of old school uh, setting the values explicitly equal rather than using join 
So we want employees amp number to equal department employees amp number. That will join from employee to department depth amp. Okay. We also need to join depth amp to department. So and department dot depth number is equal to depth amp dot depth number. Okay, three tables, two join conditions. One, the employee tables, the, the employee numbers need to be the same. Two, the department numbers need to be the same. Okay. However, are we done with our where conditions? No, we also need to not lose track of the things that we explicitly want. What do we explicitly want? We want the finance department. So the department name needs to be equal finance and depth name is equal to finance. That's one of our explicit conditions. And we want current employees only. So to date um, is null. That will give us current employees. All right, so with that, we should get the current employees in the finance department. Now, of course, I didn't test this ahead of time, so we'll see if I can get it right the first time. Oh, and lo and behold, indeed I can. There are currently, uh, we have a very international uh, finance department, and there are currently 50 employees in that department. So, you need an explicit link from a path that you can draw continuously through from the first table you need to involve straight, straight through to the last table. So we need to join table one to table two and table two to table three and that way we can get any information from any of those tables that we need meaningfully together again to answer the questions that we have that involve those three tables. In our case, uh, employees work for department. They have named work for here. Well, I have named work for here department underscore employee to make very explicit that it is the table that joins departments and employees. So we join employees to department employees. We join department to department employees. We can reference departments. We can reference. We can reference employees and we can answer the question that we have. Now, if we had four, you would just have three join conditions instead of two in this example. Okay, so there it is for our, in my estimation, easiest to understand, but slowest performing in some instances example. Let's go ahead and run through the same example with the join syntax as well. Okay, second option, which we can only use because we have the advantage of the primary key and the foreign key, both in the example of employee to depth amp and from depth to depth amp being the same in both tables. So employee, it's amp no with an underscore between. In depth amp, it's amp no with an underscore in between. Ditto for department and depth amp department underscore no so since that attribute is named exactly the same thing which by the way it does not need to be necessarily but because it is in this case we can take advantage of the using syntax so let's do that because I think it makes things a little clearer and easier to follow okay so we see here we're, we're selecting the same attributes and with any luck we'll also get the same results. Again, this is live. Okay, so we're taking the same, we're same tables, but the syntax is different. So from employee, we'll say join depth amp using, and what does employee and depth amp have in common? They have amp no in common. If that, if one was amp underscore no and the other was amp underscore num or amp pound sign, this would not work, by the way. Okay, so there's the first join, and we join the first join to the second join. So join, um, so we're joining 
those two to department and that join will be using and using takes parens depth no because that is the common attribute primary key to foreign key from department to depth amp okay and that, there we have our join done so let's add our explicit conditions with the explicit conditions it still goes in where so there's a lot of syntax to keep track of here as well as a couple of concepts where again the department name needs to be finance because that's the department that we're interested in and we want current employees so to date we need to be null okay same exact result let's let's see if it works and indeed it does we get the same results we get the same folks mark helvonger uh, the whole deal okay so um feel free to stop here but for the sake of completeness let me run through the equivalent alternative to using if you have different attribute names which we do not so we don't need to go through this work but I want to show it to you just so you can see it feel free to stop here if you're good to go but give me a second and let's run through the one last option that I want to show you okay a lot more words here uh, because we're not taking advantage of that matching which actually makes us do more but let's see it for the sake of completeness so same attributes select first name last name where we're we selecting them from let's start with employee again join same as before only use the on syntax and since the attribute from I'm sorry employee join depth amp oops, depth underscore amp on instead of using so we have to specify the combination so it's going to be employee dot amp number must equal depth amp tables amp number so a lot of words okay so there's our first join we'll join that join to our second join involving department on department dot depth no is equal to depth amp dot department number okay there's our join still have to do our, our explicit conditions with the where and where the department name is oops department name is equal to finance and to date is blank is null so that we have only the current employees if we're doing some sort of some sort of alumni registry where we want everyone who's ever worked in finance that would be a different story and we'd leave this condition out but that's not the question that we set this example out with so we need this as well and if we're lucky we will see yes indeed the exact same set of people 50 rows now notice in this case all three queries took zero seconds uh, so there's no obvious performance difference but uh, y using the the join syntax is advisable Although, in the, for the purposes of this class, I think probably the easiest syntax to understand if you're a new student is setting the values equal specifically as part of the where conditions without using join. If that works better for you, that's fine. Keep in mind that that may have negative performance implications. Um, outside of that, hope this was helpful. Sorry I admitted it, it, omitted it heretofore. Uh, study hard. We're, we're bearing down on the end of the class. The final exam will be here before you know it. Uh, so work hard and I will see you online.